Some time ago, in my ongoing hunt for some hidden gems in the adventure game genre, I came across a loose trilogy of games seemingly created by one man, Istvan Pelli. He was still in college when he created the first, Majestic Part 1, Alien Encounter, had lured Bethesda Softworks as publisher by the second, Symbiocom, also known as Sin Factor, and by the time of his third, Zero Critical, he'd made inroads to the company's most notable franchises. He had a role in the cutscenes for the Elder Scrolls Adventures Red Guard, moved up to creating the world art in Morrowind before becoming the lead artist and art director in the Fallout series. Majestic Part 1, Alien Encounter, almost cost him his grades at university. He not only produced and directed the game, but created all of the art assets and programmed the entire thing. His friends helped in other departments, Seth Jones provided the score and Sherbin Young aided with the story and occasional puzzle design. The majestic of the title is a luxury space liner that disappeared on its maiden voyage. Long after the search had been abandoned, a distress signal had been picked up. As a space field archaeologist, you take on the task to go and investigate. You won't explore the ship directly, but by remotely piloting one of four drone-like nodes. You can switch between the four at will, and they will all have their role to play by the time the game ends. Each node is able to explore and interact with the environment through three tools. A cutting torch, a computer downlink, and an onboard scanner. The torch gives you access to some parts of the ship. The link lets you access computer terminals to read or interact with what's on there. The scanner acts in the same way as the look command in a regular adventure game. While neat in concept, I think it is a little underused. You cannot access a room if an active node is occupying it, which gives you an early sign that you won't need to manipulate them much in order to solve the puzzles. And they're not really much of puzzles either. The path forward is opened by paying attention to any readouts that may contain access codes or simply answering a traditional word-based riddle. As you look around the eerily silent ship, you'll encounter some interdimensional beings pretty much doing the same on their own plane of existence. Their goal is not exactly clear to begin with, but you later find out that they are looking for a device which they assure you was not the cause of the crash, but something tells you they're not entirely being honest. Sadly, there was no part 2 to Majestic, as originally planned, but the world did continue with Symbiocom, otherwise known as Sin Factor. The story itself is entirely standalone, but it does share some elements, including references to Majestic's fate, which has become lore in their world in much the same way as Titanic has in ours. Care for a drink? <laughs> this time round, you take direct control over a maintenance worker of the IST Rident, a less luxurious interstellar passenger liner. After an attack by two warships, the entirety of the souls on board have escaped all except you, who was knocked unconscious in the ensuing chaos. You wait to find a deserted and unmanned rident adrift in the blackness of space, and your aim is to make it to safety and find out what the heck happened. There are five locations to visit throughout the adventure, each separated by their own chapter. You begin on a deserted and damaged rident before refueling at the Plasvo Space Boy. Then it's off to the residential Carswell colony, where another attack has left it empty. From here it's off to several Sinsim owned sites to uncover a larger conspiracy. Apart from the occasional droid or talking head on an intercom, you are alone on your adventure, save for your AI implant that will offer up some conversation now and then. 
This slightly sarcastic bot, which appears as text at the bottom of the screen, is known as a SIM implant, or SIMplant for short. Think of it as the Amazon Echo of its time, giving details of your surroundings and offering the occasional clue. It'll also give you access to a database where you can type in any relevant word for a detailed description, helpful for such a dense narrative. His augmentation also aids in linking to computer systems, much like the data link of the Majestic's nodes. These readouts will be where most of the plot is detailed, but they can also host some of the game's more difficult and interesting puzzles. To escape the deserted rident, you'll need some passcodes so that your position is too low level in status to know. A couple can be uncovered by overheating the core system and deciphering the info that has subsequently been dumped to the computer core. It can be more than a little daunting scrolling through some seemingly endless ones and zeros, but with a little determination, a trusty notepad, and copious amounts of caffeine to aid concentration, I found it quite fun to figure it out. Beyond these more observational puzzles, there are a few straightforward inventory ones. These are more familiar fare with simple use item on object design, but are nonetheless satisfying to solve. At one point, your actions will annoy a surly maintenance droid in a fun if explosive sequence. Another has you picking parts off panels to replace missing ones elsewhere. You destroyed my bathroom and you have the nerve to stick around. This is ridiculous. Not the most complex in design, but the presentation and implementation are what pulls you in. The way the story is told is also commendable. Without any real characters to talk to, most of the deep plot lines are hinted in the visuals and environments. A tragic suicide note left lying on an unused bed. A company-wide email commenting on an upcoming funeral of a work colleague. A resident's plea on a message board searching for his missing cat, and you'll find out what became of it later. Those simplants I mentioned earlier may have more sinister undertones. Even if you uncover the corporation's nefarious secret, their tech is still in full force by the third game, Zero Critical. Originally titled Satin Rift, this third-person adventure is more of a direct sequel to Majestic. The events detailed in the first game have direct consequences here, but to begin with, it's a simple murder mystery. On a barren planet named Realm 1, inhabited solely by a team of scientists working on the secretive Satin Project, a scientist has been killed by the project's leader, Dr. Victoria Fane, apparently in self-defense. As rookie agent Chat Ruler, you are assigned the case by the ITC, the Interstellar Transportation Commission, to find out what the holy hell is going on. Being in the third person, having a face to put to your own character is welcome though I felt strangely more detached to the story than the previous two games, neither of which even bothered to give the player character a name. It doesn't help that there is no speech at all, giving the conversations an awkward silence. This was 1998, and speech was generally to be expected for a point-and-click adventure. The CGI pre-rendered aesthetic flits between interesting and detailed, to bland and sterile, making it harder to warm to the game overall. As for the game design, well, it's, it's generally far easier than what's come before, and those weren't particularly difficult to begin with. There is less reliance on environmental observation, but the puzzles are still consistent with what's come before. One early puzzle even manipulates temperature, in much the same way as the one in Symbiocom I mentioned earlier. In that game you had to overheat a computer core so that the readouts will spew out some door codes. Here, you'll have to warm up the walk-in freezer to melt the frozen dead body temporarily stored in there so you can pry an object from its dead hand. Despite all of this, progress is usually achieved by simply talking to everyone, exhausting dialogue trees as you go. This isn't as much of a chore as you'd expect, as it's all fairly well written for the most part. At times, however, it can feel a little overwritten. 
The way some characters speak can sometimes feel a little unnatural, as if they're speaking to you, the player, rather than chat the person. Without a robot or artificial intelligence chiming in information, conversations can on occasion devolve into exposition dumps or barely disguised plot points. Nevertheless, the overall mystery is a rather good one, and by the time those interdimensional aliens rear their ugly heads halfway through, you will be hooked. It even answers some lingering questions left by the previous games, deepening the mythology and lore. More so than before, there are moments that expose the game's low-budget origins. I've already mentioned the lack of voice acting, but the animation appears a little shoddy in occasion too. The same three members of the team worked in their same roles here, so you can excuse the occasional dips in quality. But when some moments could be confused for a bigger budgeted 90s release from someone like Sierra or Cyan Worlds, the less polished moments do stand out. In the end though, all three entries in Istvan Pelli's Majestic Trilogy are excellent and must plays for any adventure game fan out there. Thank you all for watching, I've been Biffman and if you like the look of these games you can find out more on the Collection Chamber website, link in the description below. Be sure to like, share, subscribe and ring that bell to be notified when more content comes out. Until then, I'll see you next time on the Collection Chamber.